this is Dave Davies from Beanstalk SEO here at part four um, of our short video series on Google Analytics for the layman. Uh, what we're going to be covering in here, in the first three videos we focused mainly on understanding what your traffic sources were and, and a few different ways to segment them to understand what their real value was uh, on a very elementary level. Um, here we're going to carry that sort of level of information across. We're not going to get into funnels and goals and things like that. But we're going to take a look at ways that you can view sort of the, the default information available to you through your analytics um, and get an idea for how to sort of view it from the context of not just how can we better our site, what are some problems with our site, what are our visitors doing, um, but also a, a few different ways that we can look at gleaning from this some opportunities. So before we get into viewing our content information, it's important to remember to try and go into this section of things fairly open-minded. So don't go in with a preconceived notion of necessarily exactly what you want your visitors to do, but try and go into this as open-minded as you can about um, from the signals that they're sending, how can you take uh, advantage as much as possible about what they are doing, not what you want them to do. Um, so let's take a look. Now we're, we're taking a look at the content on our site, so obviously we're going to go to the content section of our analytics over here. First place I always start is on the all pages. Um, so what we're viewing here is the total number of times that each page has been viewed in the time period that we've specified above. Um, so in this case we can see that the paper stencils, for example, is, is the most viewed. For many of you, if not most of you, it's going to be the home page, uh, which is much more normal for most sites. Um, and then we go down. So we get a, a quick idea of what are our most popular pages on our site. So knowing that it's the paper stencils page, I need to put that into my brain to get a real understanding of, okay, why is that? So I jot that down and, and go, okay, I need to, to remember and look into that further. And then looking down, looking through the, the pages, getting an understanding of what types of, of pages are ranking. So we have our home page, um, but for the most part, what we're seeing here, you know, a supply page, that's a product page, stencils, that's a product page, but a lot of them history, pictures, tips, FAQ, um, a lot of these are related to more information based information So, or, or pages. So this is something that's important for me to remember, jot that down and go, hey, why is that? What are they doing when they get there? Um, are they converting later or are they just in there looking for some information and off? So. Um, when we're looking for that, we'll uh, need to figure out also when they're going to the information pages, am I distracting them from the buy cycle or am I actually, you know, are they entering in on the information pages and, and carrying forward from there. So to get a better understanding of that, we'll go to the landing pages, which is traditionally the next step in, in the process that I look at. Um, we can see, not surprisingly, paper stencils page, which is highest. Um, page as far as uh, page views overall on the site um, is also our top landing page. That wasn't by necessity, but it happens to be that way and, and with, with volumes that uh, sizable um, in difference between that and the home page as far as total, uh, total views. I gathered that that would be the case. Um, so we're taking a look here and we can see stencils is the top um, landing page, home page, great, but then we start heading into more of the information based. Um, pages and, and they seem to be making up a large bulk of the entry points on this site. So what this is telling me by default, and we can verify this with a, a little deeper look into the analytics, which we're going to be doing, um, but what this tells me by default is okay, a lot of people are finding this site through information. They're not finding it necessarily to look for a product. They may just be looking for um, information on this product. Fantastic. We enjoy anybody at our site. Um, if this site was geared towards um, advertising, this would be fantastic. So if we we're sort of selling by impression or something, that'd be fantastic. Um, if we're selling products, this may or uh, may not by default be a great thing. But we're going to look at some some quick ways to make uh, turn these into opportunities for us because this is a product based site. So looking a little deeper into the into the analytics at, at what's quickly available to us, let's go through onto the paper stencils page and we're going to go into a secondary dimension. There's a couple of them that we're going to cover here and just our basics on on analytics. So the first thing, let's get a quick idea of what keywords they're searching to enter in on this specific page. Um, so what we're going to be looking at here, there's there's a couple things we need to consider. Obviously we have to filter out the not set, which Google's not showing us um, the keyword data that's coming in there. Um, so we need to look and, and first figure out is this the most relevant page for them to land on and is there a problem with the traffic source to this page. So when we look at something like paper stencils being the, the target page, um, we look at something related to designs, 
yes, this makes sense. Uh, perfectly logical that they be landing there. Um, but when we come down to number four in the list with 52 over the month, um, people entering this page, we see a generic term like henna tattoo. Um, now somebody searching for that may be looking for information, but they also may be looking for kits or, or large scale products or something like that. This may be a problem. So what we need to do is take a look at one of two things. Either we need to adjust that page if, if it turns out this page is, is ranking so far ahead um, of say the home page or, or another more applicable page to a wide array of products available in the henna um, sort of category. Um, we need to figure out, okay, can we rank a page that's more appropriate quickly? Um, if the answer is yes, okay, focus there. Um, if the answer is no to doing that, then what we need to take a look at is, okay, is there a way that I can make adjustments to this page so that I can make better use of that traffic once they get there? Now we're seeing the bounce rate on that is fairly high. Um, average visitor duration, fairly low, so there is a problem. So that problem needs to be addressed and we need to find a way to funnel these people to more appropriate pages quickly. Um, but for the most part, um, the entry points onto the page are related to design and designs and things like that. So it makes much more sense that they are landing here. So mo for the most part on this page, um, what we're seeing is indicative of, of what we would wish to see on that. Now, coming from our landing pages, of course, next in the list we need to look at is our exit pages. Um, this is an often overlooked area. Um, we start to think of exit pages when we're thinking of conversion optimization and, and things like that, but it's not necessarily the case where that's the only time that it's applicable. Um, so what we're going to take a look at here, rather than looking at the keywords that are driving people to our exit pages, which we can also do, um, this time we're just going to take a quick look at what are the landing pages that they're coming in at, just to, to cover that as well, because that's important when we're viewing exit. It's also important when we're viewing um, different areas of our analytics, but we're going to cover it here. Um, so we can see that people coming in on um, or exiting on our stencils page generally are, are the top or the top most popular is entering in on that page but with an exit of 71 percent so what's happening there is that they're entering in on that page navigating to other things maybe specific products going back hitting that page realizing that oh there isn't something that quite matches what I want um, and going across so something I as a website owner would have to ask myself is okay are there new products that I need to add obviously they're looking for something um, what are they looking for what am I not offering and, and look for some opportunities there to expand on on my offerings the fact that they're clicking through onto specific products is telling me that there's they are interested in specific products um, but they're just not not purchasing any um, now here if we scroll a little bit down we can see that um, people are, are coming in in very, very similar patterns. They're entering in on, on specific pages, exiting on those pages, but viewing different things. Um, so these are the same sort of questions we're going to have to ask ourselves as we go down. But if we click through on a specific page, enter in, now we can see on that page specifically what are they doing. So we can get uh, glean a little more detail and you may have higher volumes because your page may be a little more dynamic than the specific site we're using in the example here. But what I'm looking for here in the game, we're trying to go in open-minded, but I already got a gist of, of sort of what I'm looking for, um, is patterns where I'm seeing them either move from product to information or information to product. So here we're seeing some information-based um, pages, so they would be entering in on, on the history. Their query would have been more related to history, but they have an interest in in the actual product itself. Okay, great, so we need to take a look at that page and see if there's some ways that we can um, get more of them across there, because really, this is only two. Um, so let's take a look now instead then, since we're looking at the, at the information-based pages, um, let's go back to our exit pages and let's look more at, uh, at one of ours that's related more to information that people might be looking for. So instead of looking at a conversion-oriented page, now we're going to look at our um, one that's more based on uh, passing information and take a look at what they're doing, what are their landing pages. And here we see an interesting uh, sort of picture ahead of us. So we're on the history, so somebody's obviously exiting. They have shown an interest in our site on something related to history, so something more related to the information. Here they're entering on history, but they're they're looking around, so they've looked probably at a few information pages. They've ended up back at a, at a history one. Um, 
here they've entered it the um, home page, a eh, minor number, but looking through we're seeing like the FAQ page, the pictures page, the tips page, then we'd explore a little further using some of the tips that we found in earlier videos um, to find out specifically okay what queries are, are leading people into the tips and things like that, but at the the long and short of it is uh, a lot of people are entering from history, FAQ pictures and tips, they're entering on information based queries, they're exiting on an information based. So chances are, you want to do some testing, but chances are that these are people looking for information they're not going to convert or, or a high likelihood that they're not going to convert. This doesn't mean that they hold no value. What this means is you have information on your site that is of value to visitors. So deployment of this type of information through social media, using it as a link target, using it as an authoritative document on the web, getting people more information about the history of henna and things like that. Um, well, you can't maybe use it a, as much as you would like as a conversion tool. Um, it, it obviously makes a fantastic link target. And that's what I mean by keeping your mind open as you head into looking at your content and looking at your landing page statistics, getting an understanding of what your visitors are doing by seeing them on information leading to information pages, um, indicating that they're probably not somebody that you can convert. But hey, what we can do um, is make the most of this. We have this content there. It's obviously of interest. People are, are visiting it. Um, so why don't we use it um, in our link building efforts and as a, as a resource um, externally on, on third party sites, be it through social media or in our link building efforts, um, to try and drive some supplement or, or some alternative value to this, thus strengthening our domain and, and strengthening our all, overall efforts. Um, you know, thus pushing up your rankings for phrases that are a little more conversion oriented. So hopefully that's helpful. In our next video, we're just going to take a quick overview of all of the different um, areas that you can look at in analytics, um, quick definitions of what you're going to find when you get there, um, and hope that you're exploring these different areas a little more uh, in depth than I'm able to um, here in just some very, very quick videos where I'm hoping to just give you a quick overview of what's available to you um, on, uh, uh, on sort of a, a quick uh, layman sort of level. Thank you.